Hello and welcome my fellow Lashpreneurs. I am beyond honored today to have a major lash boss and innovator on today's episode. She started her career as an esthetician and lash artist in 2007 and in 2013, she founded the massively successful lash product line and training academy. You might have heard of it. It's called Lash Affair by Jay Paris. She is Janelle Paris and she is joining me today on Lessons of Lashpreneur show to give us insight on the real deal behind building an epic lash brand. Hello, Janelle. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Lessons of a Lashpreneur show. Thank you for having me. You're so sweet. You're so lucky. Uh, (laughs) Oh my God, it's so lucky. I'm so lucky, girl. (laughs) I am honored. Um, We met, I think, for the first time at the Vegas show in June. And we've kind of just had this little little mini girl crush, like, how can we work together? How can we start collaborating? So... Stay tuned for more interesting stuff in the future between Lash Affair and the Lashpreneur. But today I wanted to really understand kind of the woman behind the lashes. Um, Lash Affair was a company I stumbled upon very early in my career. I became a lash artist in 2013, and it was probably within six to eight months of that where I started seeing your lashes everywhere and started going to conferences and seeing your products there. And one of the coolest things about walking up to your table at the first conference I went to, or the first uh, trade show I went to, was your lookbook, I think is what you call it, where you could actually, you had all the lashes displayed out in different diameters and different curls, and you could see them all compared to each other. And to me, that was so unique and different that me as the end user of your products could actually go up and touch and feel them rather than them just being displayed in a case and looking nice. What was the idea behind creating that kind of tactical experience? Um, I just feel like, at least for myself, um, I know how important it is. Uh, I'll just give you one example. So if someone's trying to show me a photo on their phone, I'm like, oh, I have to hold the phone. So for me, I'm very tactile, as I'm sure most flash artists are. Um, so I think just to save the, um, the hassle of having to open up all the singular trays, it's just nice to have everything there for people to touch and feel. Because at the end of the day, people want to feel and touch products. That's the main reason to go to trade shows instead of ordering online. It gives just people the opportunity to feel um, the softness and the quality that's there. So, sorry. Yeah, and what they're sending home on their clients before they've already committed. Yes. To yes. Brilliant. And it's right. just a fun um, visual tool. I think um, everybody everybody enjoys something they can touch and feel. So Absolutely. Been great. People have been really loving them. And I like them. really utilizing them in their consultation process because I think their end user, which is our exactly. clients, they enjoy that even more because, you know, we're like, we're going to do these lashes on you. And sometimes people have never even seen a lash. They've never even seen, um, you know, the variations of the thicknesses. So I think it's important to sort of help um, educate the clients too. Yeah, I agree. I didn't even think about it for like consultation purposes because yes. I remember, I remember back in the day there was the little almost like a rod where you could like put lashes on it and the client and hold, like, it hold it up in your eye. <laughs> I think I made one of those back in the day. But it gives the idea of when you're yeah. talking to a client, ooh, I think we should do a CD blend or maybe an L plus right. on the outer corners that they can actually see what you're talking about instead of all of this very technical speak. Or right. they can talk about different lengths. Like your natural lash is an eight millimeter here. If we try to do a 15, it's going to be like a fat kid on a diving board kind of situation. So I, I think in enhancing not only setting real, realistic expectations for your client, having stuff that they can touch and feel so they, they don't think it's like this super spiky, stiff, crunchy right. kind of feel, especially if they've had lashes before where that was the case. I think it's oh, really right. have them be able to play with it as well. It just enhances the full experience and kind of going back to, um, you know, all of our senses. We touch, we feel, we see, all of that. So that's part of the reason why we put scent in our packages. So not only are our, are our, our clients opening a beautiful box that has all of our logos on it, they get the experience of smelling it and then they get to touch everything. So it's just hitting You get to smell all. Janelle, guys. It's amazing. <laughs> it's and actually, that captured in the mom was picked up by my mom. That was my mom's favorite set. So I, oh, I, like, I love that. that. Um, little sentimental touches. So give me um, an idea of how you got started with Lash Affair. Where did the idea come from? You were obviously a working lash artist. So how did you kind of move into the product space? So, and this is the absolute real, realest answer I could give. This is real talk as it gets. So um, I was an esthetician for 
I think like 10 years before I got into lashing. So took the class and I was like, this is it. Great. I wanted to do nothing but lashes in my services, which is all lashing. So as you know, um, and even watching this, that is really taxing on your body. So, um, you know, and I just met my husband at the time. So he was living in Connecticut. So that sort of made me, um, have to be a commuter hour and a half drive wasn't cool so you know that started to be a really big hassle having to drive and you know back and forth go to work sitting behind the chair all day and i'm only one person right so we like to travel we're not having any children so he's just like yes let's go away any opportunity that we that i can that we can get with each other so that kind of got to be difficult i um, started leaving my clients like two to three weeks at a time you know those girls get their bills like they're not having that so um on the plane one day i had um this is a gentleman it's not my mentor i don't know him but just somebody who i look up to in the business space so i had a client um say that you should listen to this gentleman's podcast i'm like great his name is tim ferris i don't know if you are familiar yeah. with him four hour work week yes yep there it is so anyways long story short i'll keep this quick my client recommended reading's book she's like you have such a fun spirit you want to travel you want to do all these things I'm not a nine to five or i've never been she's like you already fit in that space read this book it'd be fantastic so read the book totally changed my life the book in a nutshell if for anyone who hasn't read it it's it's i've recommended it. it's it's been life-changing um, for a lot of people that i know yeah. um, it's about automation and how to automate your life um Funny because it's zero about my lifestyle. Now this automated actually <laughs> the company has grown to a spot where I'm not even I have to, you know, limit myself on how much time that we take. Um now. So it's funny, it's like we started last year to automate, get me out of the back back behind the chair, out behind the chair, I should say, so that we can have more flexibility and sort of that that book sort of guides you to either do sell like a service or products. So for me, I was like, wow, like I really, I was already embedded in this lash industry, loved everything about it. So I saw a space for lash products. So they sort of fit right into like the next step of like, wow, right, right, you right. sell something online, what are we going to sell? I don't, you know, I can't think of anything. Lash products that just, it fit perfectly into, into where my life was heading at the moment. So that's really the honest truth as to why we started Lash Affair. I wanted to free up my time. I wanted, I was thinking long-term, like, I was already having health problems and I have spoken to you about this, my hands, my neck. I just really burnt out fast. Um, had a car accident, obviously I didn't have the tools, uh, as, you know, most of us have today, um, you know, to be better lash artists, to have better longevity. So anyways, I wish I could take my advice that, you know, all the things that I know now and sort of implant it into my younger self, but whatever you live and you learn. So for me to have this idea to get out of the chair and not actually do the services, but still be a part of something that I really enjoy and love. And it's very creative and you know, the, the whole processes um, from starting something from conception to designing the packaging, that's really fun. So that was how we decided to, you know, sort of go full speed into Lash Fair was to sort of have some extra money that we could make while we were traveling and to sort of maybe fund our traveling you know, the elusive passive yeah. income, right? Passive. <laughs> Make money while you sleep kind of a thing. Right. Which some aspects are, you know, we did adopt that and some aspects are, you know, automated, but you know, when you have a company the size now, it's far from automated. So well, um, the thing about passive income is that you actually end up putting in the work just at a different time. So yes, you sure. might get to sleep, but it's not, it's not like you didn't put in the work on the forefront, but um, the book she's talking about is Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Work Week. I know I had a couple questions about that. Um, fantastic. I think that was very similar to how I created The Lashpreneurs. I was looking for what was next as a sustainable career, knowing that I physically couldn't lash behind the chair. And the most common kind of things people think of are becoming an educator or having a lash brand or bringing on a staff. Right. None of those are easy. None of those are guaranteed money. None of those are like sit back and you know, you're going to vacation in Mexico every other week. They are a lot more running of a business than it is the artistry and skill set. And I think that's a struggle for a lot of people who try to do everything, you know, both lashing, both managing their team, both building a business, both marketing. It's a lot and it's something has to give at some point. And for me, well, usually what the, what gives is their business goes under. 
that's usually how it works. Like everybody's like, oh, this is great, I'm making a little sales, and then it's like boom, and they don't even understand why that happened. Or their personal life, right? Their the business background. They they would be like, took one look at your business plan and be like, all right, I can foresee where you're going to be in two years, and this, this, you know. But if you don't have any business background, I think that could be really hard to sort of you know detect early on. Um, totally. Yeah, it's, it's 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 been a really fun journey, though. What do you say on the the opposite end of that? What has been the biggest uphill battle for you in growing your business? I think passing the baton. Mm. It, because I mean, just for instance, we, I came into the office and don't mind my office where we're in the middle of doing a whole design rerun. So we're like in mid stages. So sorry about that. Um, I think that sort of relinquishing the control, because if you think about it, um, I think artist brain and there's like business minded brain. So it's like, there's not one that's not better. So I was like artist brain that like, I just want to be the creative and I want to do it, all the things. Right. But when it comes down to it, you can't though. You just, you really just can't. So the hardest thing for me has been like, you know, passing off my duties. Delegate. Because, you know, I was a one woman show when I had my studio. So, or my, my last studio. So it was just me and I did all the services. I did all the booking. I did all the things. I did the designing and all that. So it's just, it's hard to sort of, you know, let old habits die. Like I just, but I'm like getting much better. I just came into work. And there was like a new girl I hadn't even met before that works here. I was like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm just I'm the owner. <laughs> oh, she, no. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so long, long answer. Um, yeah, I, no, I mean, I definitely, especially when you're so used to hustling and doing everything yourself and putting in blood, sweat, and tears and the control aspect, right? Like a lot of entrepreneurs, we like the control. We like to be in control of our business. And when you bring in somebody else, there is this perception that they're never going to do it as good as you. However, you have to give them the opportunity to do it as good as you. Right. That's the problem that I see a lot of lash artists, even who bring on staff, they're like, oh, nobody ever stays, or oh, my staff stole clients, or oh, this, this, and that. But one of my favorite quotes um, is, a flower doesn't bloom, or when a flower doesn't bloom, we don't blame the flower, we blame the environment in which it was right. planted. So yes. if you are not creating an environment for a flower to bloom, i.e. your yes. employees or your team, it's really what did you do wrong that, because right. when they, when somebody signs up to work for you or be a part of your team, they want to be successful, right? They didn't take the position, you know, for all the glitz and glamour, I wouldn't think. Right. They really wanted to excel in this role. And if they end up leaving that's mainly on the owner or the manager to that didn't facilitate and foster sure. an where they could bloom right you can. I, know it's hard. I know it's hard yeah no and and it's and i totally agree with what you're saying that was a great point that you brought up because it's like i look back on some of the things that i did early on growing this business that i have the wherewithal to be like yes that was 100 percent my fault but if like i'm not giving these people the tools how are they supposed to execute properly but if i'm not even aware of the tools that's that's a problem so it's like you're taking um and i see this it's again something wrong with it but it's like i see um you know mo the majority of the team now that we have they're not lash artists they don't come from the lash industry they're sales women they're marketing you know they're marketing experts they have like harvard level degrees like these people are you know like rock brilliant <laughs> so um i think that it's it's, it's, it's okay to make mistakes and stuff. And I think that for me, I, um, I'm taking a step back and it's becoming easier for me to let go of that control because I don't know, I don't have the skill sets to be like, yes, this is how we're going to hit all these sales goals. I'm going to have no experience in sales. You know, I let my sales manager do that. So it's like, you just have to like trust them and know that they have the best interests of the company in mind. And at the end of the day, if they don't, they're probably not going to last too long. So yeah, you know, we say we hire fast and, or we'll hire slow, fire fast. Or, I'm in that point now where it's yeah. at the level of my business. I I'm at the point now where I want somebody who can do it better than me. And that costs right. really pretty penny. So it's kind of sure. like, oh my God return on investment, but having to make the investment up front of a really qualified team. I will say that my right hand woman, when I brought her on last year, revolutionized my business. I, I say it was a duct tape business before. Like I just kept slapping stuff together and she came yeah. in and made it like a legit business. And we've yeah. been 
scale and grow so quickly because she was able to help me implement systems. So yeah. it can be challenging and it can take a long time to get the right person in. But when you get that right person and the right team in, woo, that's how you get to these levels of success is the team. Yes. And so the leader of the team. So basically you are and I are on the same exact page. Seriously, seriously though, because I, I, within the last three, four months, our company has gone in the most amazing direction. Um, so I'm so grateful for everybody that supports us, but you know, how long have we been a company? Six, six years. And I just found these women right. and I say women because they're women and I love that. Yes, girl. Yes. So, well, besides Paul, I don't want to discount my, my guy over there, but. So how did that come about? When did Paul become Lash Affair Man? Um, so he was involved with the business for about two years. Um, it was just actually just a, me and one other person. Yeah, for like a few years, maybe even three. Um, and I was starting to really struggle because um, this is kind of sad to say this, but I'm just really not as organized as I want to be. I'm not a spreadsheet person. Of course, I am much more now than I was then. I've learned. I've learned from the people around me. Like, wow, they seem like they really have their shit together. <laughs> so why don't I adopt some of those, like, those little daily nuggets that they're doing? So I've, I've grown and I want to celebrate my wins, my gains, but just in general, like I was terrible at inventory management and forecasting and growth because I'm just worried about what my social media looks like. You know what I mean? I'm the artist. I want everything to look pretty. So I wasn't like in the numbers, in the back end being like, yes, this is our lead time. This is how much we've grown. This is the units. Like that's, that's, that's really the business stuff. Yeah. No, but it's really important. And it's like <laughs> embarrassing that I wasn't even doing that, but you know, that's, that's a thing. Like, I think that's what, if you are going to be a solo person, just recognize like you're probably going to have a lot of, 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 um, I don't want to say negative qualities, but like you're going to lack a lot of qualities that you need to be successful. So he stepped in and he, he, um, our business, I used to run the business out of my, um, one of our bedrooms in our house. So he came into the little, like the Packer station and all the bins. I have like an Ikea organizing system or whatever. Um, and he was like, Oh, a lot of these bins are empty. I'm like, well, what's happening here? And I was like, I don't know. I just there. We sold them. Or just whatever, whatever. So he was like looking at our numbers and at our sales. And he was like, wow, like this is a, this is really a business. So like, uh, yeah. Hi. I was like, honestly, Paul, like I need your help. And he's led teams of 90 people before. Like he has a lot of experience in running larger businesses with inventory and all that stuff. So he was like, all right, I'll help you out here. Out. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you out here. And of course he was um, our fund. We got our funding from him. Like he, I'm his wife, obviously, but he funded the company. So we didn't have a, an outside investor at first. He funded it. So it was in his best interest, our best interest that the company succeeded. You know? Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. You know, I tried working with my husband, but we just had different skill sets and it's just oh, not yeah. everybody. That's fun. <laughs> I um, love those, no. like Kim James, you, you guys all work with your husbands and I'm like, hey, I'm okay. I'm not here to be like, yes, let's just do photos with each other all day. You know? <laughs> let's pretend it's amazing. Like, I'm not saying that's what anyone else is doing. I'm just saying for us. Like, I'm not just like, hey, let's close, babe. Right. But like, at the end of the day, I think this, it's all comes down to balance. So we have an office. We don't, you know, work out of our house or anything like that. So no. I come in opposite days. Um, and now it's like, our team is so big really like they're in a meeting across the hall with six people like I don't even know what's going on in there we don't even really work together that often like of course yeah. like you have the same vision your visionary yeah life. or he'll be like all right if, um because I do uh the research and development I'll be like all right there's a product blah, blah blah and then I pass it off so he can finish like the ordering and the inventory and all that so we do work together but not nearly as much as we used to because um just that didn't work for me yeah I don't want to zone of genius I don't want to be around anybody that much. <laughs> Truly though, because you think about it, it's not really, it's not common for you to like work all day with your husband and then go home at night. It's like, what do you talk about? Like, I don't want to talk about lash stuff anymore. Like, I want to talk about dogs, man. So. <laughs> all right. Like, well, let's, oh, let's just talk about dogs. Uh, <laughs> with what three things do you think have been essential to your success in the lash industry? Um, so for me, I think, uh, and I, it's funny, as I ran these things by Sydney, I was like, what do you think that sounds, and I was like, I think it sounds, or she was like, I think it sounds great. So I think for me, what has allowed us to get to this point is me being patient 
Mm-hmm. And I actually felt weird even saying that because sometimes I don't feel as patient. But I think the patience to find the team, patience to, you know, to, to grow at a proper speed, patience for handling problems when they come about, because they always come about. Things never work out the way you want them to. So just allowing myself to just be like a little bit calmer and not like, oh, that didn't go perfect. You just have to have patience because it's like, it's just not how things work. So I really have calmed down a lot. Um, I think the second one is allowing myself to fail because I used to go in these little tailspins of like if something didn't work out, I would be really upset and I'm kind of private so I would cry and I'd be like, oh, I'm so sensitive and this is my baby and I truly want every person that orders product from us to get a perfect bottle of adhesive or like a perfect tray of lashes or whatever it is or pick a design and want everybody to love it but it just doesn't work that way. So I think for me, um, whereas I'm I was doing a lot of things that were new to me. I was just behind the chair. So having to do all these business steps and business processes was really frustrating at first. But I think allowing myself the ability to quote unquote fail, which I don't even look at it as failures. And you either have to fail and fuck up a bunch of times in order to like make mistakes and grow. Because if you're not failing, I know that's cliche, everybody says that though, but it's like you have to fail. If you're not failing, I don't know how hard you're working or if you're right like how it. how would you know how to do something you've never done before right. if you don't have to learn the hard way sometimes i mean right. I, I i take the same approach like i don't see anything as a failure because that would be a meaning you as the person who decided it was failure assigned it it's an opportunity right. to learn and evolve and by having a failure be a negative thing like having it mean that you weren't a successful business right. or you can't do this right it's only but- just putting yourself back totally human like sometimes I used to do that so I think now like as I've grown the past few years like I'm just like I have to allow myself the ability to just like pick back up again and I take a lot of yoga that's how I keep my my stuff down in the yoga woman my instructor I love her to death she has like her little mantra at the beginning of class and she's um she says that uh what did she say? When you're, you're talking about yogis and we're into practicing, she's like, you know, you fall over a thousand times when you're learning to walk, right? So she's like, if you're trying to do a new scale or do anything, you have to allow yourself the ability to get back up again and learn from what you just did. So I feel like that's a big one is like, just being nice to yourself. Really what that comes down to is just being nice to yourself, your internal monologue, like be kind, like, you can get caught up in a tailspin. I think that it's just the world is so hard now with social media. I think that we can really be super negative to ourselves, not even to other people, to that internal voice. Um, can really get you down, but I think that that, that ability for me, like being able to brush myself off, you know, brush my shoulders off, is, is for me, I think that that's been uh, uh, a good quality for me to be successful in this trade. So, um, and I think the most important one, this last one, is the most important for sure is my team, Mm. at least with my business model, um, would it work without this team? Because I tried that for a hot minute, (laughs) not on purpose necessarily, because I was never like, I want to be the one, you know, like I want to do all the things like that's the, I just need a warm body in here. No, that's not me. Like I don't (laughs) want to pack our orders anymore and I don't want to take every phone call that comes in. Like I don't want to do all of the, everything that goes into what we do like I right. don't want to do everything truly so you shouldn't you shouldn't yeah at a level you shouldn't be doing everything there's yeah. a time to be the one woman show and at a certain point you have to let go of that like you said delegate and that can yeah. be a struggle because you're yeah but you just know? having these key players in place is like I, I really all like I don't want to say all my success of course I don't want to discount anything I've done in this company but like I really admire it value the team that I have here. I just, they're so amazing. So those, those been able to achieve things that I'm sure are just blowing your mind or would have blown your mind years ago because you have such a dedicated team who believes in the vision that you have. Yeah. Have. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I feel so fortunate. I don't want to say lucky, but because that's not, I don't believe in that, but I feel you very fired fortunate. them. So that was up to you. Yeah. So tell me what's in the future for Lash Affair. What's ahead? So some of the things that we talked about already, but um, I think one of the major things that we want to start to um, to focus on, there's so many, it's like how do you pick one, um, 
is, is workshops and like not necessarily full blown classes where it's like a two day class is we want to start doing workshops. We want to do social media workshops. We want to do, you know, do you need tips on how to sell retail and just how to whatever it is, email marketing. Like cheap dive. Yeah. So just, um, obviously certain skills, maybe just color lashes. I'm not just discounting, just no, no lash stuff, but I, we want to focus more on workshops in our local yes. Um, market because Arizona it turns out we had a workshop and um, we did a couple of I think maybe a month ago now I don't know really bad with gauging time with um, a local company Madla Browse they're at a Tempe and I absolutely fell in love with the owner she's so sweet and we just really we hit it off and I was like wow, I just see the power in the collaboration I love it so we did a workshop and it was sold out we had a waiting list and like everybody was so yeah I was like this is amazing. It turns out there's some gems here in the valley. So um, there's, I was like, how are all these lash artists here? I don't even know them. I was like, <laughs> I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people just, you know, here wanting to come together as a community. So we're really excited. Um, we have a new head of waters. Um, so we're going to be hosting here. We have a big room. So we have, you know, up to 75, I think 75 bodies in there. So we're going to be doing that a lot. Maybe we should of, do the Lashpreneur and Lash Fair Live. <laughs> We are, we're doing things, girl. We're doing things. I'm excited to work with you more in the year. Um, yes. You. I love what you're doing and I love your, what you stand for and I, I love your voice. I love seeing your comments in the forums. <laughs> People get so nasty towards you and you're like, I don't want to debate. And you're like, this isn't a debate. This is a oh, I know exactly the conversation you're talking about. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah, it, just, it just makes me proud that there's people out there like not not just caving to status quo. Yep. Right. Because that's just not how it works. So. All right. So tell people where they can find more about Lash Affair. So more about Lash Affair, you can go to uh, Lash Affair by JP. That's our Facebook and our Instagram handle. If you want to find more about me, it's Janelle Paris, my first and last name. Although, disclaimer, I'm kind of a private person and I don't really post as much as I probably should. I don't know if there's a should. I don't want to lie. I'm trying to get better at that because it's not my first like instinct is to post every little thing that I'm doing online. It's just, it's, I don't know. There needs to be a boundary sometimes. Yeah. Of course, I no find people that don't have that though. And I'm just like, wow, like you post all of the things? Like, oh, it's cool. We didn't grow up in this generation, right? I know. <laughs> is that what it is? I'm just like, old now and I'm just like my dad. And I'm like, how do I work this media? Like, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Janelle, thank you so much for joining me today. This was awesome. And um, I just, I admire you so much and thank you for reaching out and trying to connect and yes. see what more we can do together. So thank you everyone for tuning in today. Have a good one. Bye.